It took Gwen and I years, but we had access to fertility treatments. And when our daughter was born, we named her Hope. Hope, Gus, and Gwen, you are my entire world, and I love you. I'm letting you in on how we started a family because this is a big part about what this election is about. Freedom! That, to me, was one of the most touching moments of the DNC, and I actually got a little bit choked up when I saw that, which doesn't really happen that often because I'm a cynical bastard who's on enough antidepressants to kill a horse. I'm joking, of course, but nonetheless, the point is that it takes a lot to make me feel emotional, and that right there, that did it. In fact, watching it again almost had as big of an impact on me as the first time that I saw it. Because that right there, that is what life is all about. The love that we have for each other makes our short time on this rock all seem worthwhile. And to see a 17-year-old kid with a nonverbal learning disability tear up because he loves his dad so much and is so proud of his dad to the point where he's saying, that's my dad, it's just so pure and beautiful and it's powerful. It's the essence of humanity. And I don't care if you're a Republican even Republicans should see that and think, that's amazing. That's beautiful. In fact, Ben Shapiro even admitted this is really quite nice. Because how could you not say that about that moment? Listen, I despise Republicans. Everybody knows that. But that doesn't mean that I think it's impossible for a Republican to be a good parent or be delightful on an interpersonal level. So if I saw the child of a Republican at a convention declare their love for a parent, I'd feel exactly the same way. The same way I feel as Tim Walz and his son having that moment. But I hate to be that guy because, of course, there were some right-wingers who found something negative to say about that. And I know it was one of the most wholesome moments ever, but trust me, there are people who had some shit to talk. So what you're going to see is very depressing, but stick around because I'm going to end on a more happy note. Having said that, though, Let's trek through the mud just for a little bit so we can see what some people are saying about that wholesome moment. In a now deleted tweet, openly racist Ann Coulter reacted to the news saying, talk about weird. Yeah, so, you know, she's clearly mad about the weird criticism from Tim Walls, but calling his 17-year-old son weird for loving his dad is exactly what Tim Walls meant when he said that Republicans were weird. So thank you for proving his point, Anne. But she's not alone because Republican propagandist Dinesh D'Souza says, the kid might have mental problems, but he's acting just like Tim Walls. So what's Walls' excuse? Um, what? What are you even talking about? Uh, get this one. Milo Yiannopoulos says, this boy has been molested. I genuinely don't even know what to say to that. That is a demented thing to say in response to that moment. Like, what is wrong with Milo Yiannopoulos? Uh, on top of that, in a now deleted tweet, Milwaukee talk show host Jay Weber says, sorry, but this is embarrassing for both father and son. If the walls represent today's American man, this country is screwed. Meet my son, Gus. He's a blubbering bitch boy. His mother and I are very proud. So disgusting. 2024 Trump delegate Mike Crispy says, Tim Wall's stupid crying son isn't the flex the left thinks it is. You raised your kid to be a puffy beta male. Congrats. Does Baron Trump cry? Nope. Does he love his father? Of course. That's the type of values I want leading the country. Okay, whatever, dude. Uh, finally, Vince Langman, a massive right-wing account on Twitter, says, pray every day that your sons grow up to be like Baron Trump and not Gus Walls. Yeah. Now, there were lots of other examples. Many people tweeted things that I can't repeat on this show because it would be a terms of service violation. It was that bad. Needless to say, you know, these people are absolutely soulless. And this is the type of hyperpartisanship that Tim Walls talks about being a product of the MAGA era and how we can't even have conversations with families at dinner anymore because everybody is so polarized, right? These are the kinds of conservatives that we have in our families who we struggle to get along with because they always say terrible things like that because their brains have been broken from Trumpian politics. That kind of cruelty has ruined relationships. Some Trump-supporting parents have become as cruel and cold-hearted as those tweeters, and that's ruined relationships. You know, maybe these tweets 
are the product of jealousy because, you know, these folks don't have that relationship with their children because of the path they've gone down politically. I don't know. But let me just say, if your reaction to a father and son declaring their love for each other is to be negative and to make fun of it or put them down, your brain is broken. Your brain is broken. There's nothing else to say about that. You're just... I don't know what to say, honestly. Like, I won't self-diagnose you over the internet, but that's a, not a normal thing to say in response to seeing a father and son love each other. It's just not. Now, the silver lining and where we arrive at the more happy ending to this story is that these attacks on Tim Wall's son were beyond the pale, even for some Republicans who typically are pretty cruel themselves. For example, Cassandra Fairbanks of Timcast tweeted, he can't speak. He has a learning disability. This is wholesome and sweet. He's super proud of his dad. Families are cool. I'm mean as hell, and the comments about him are off-putting even to me. Now, Matt Walsh actually responded in agreement, adding, Yeah, attacking a kid for loving his dad is the dumbest move I've seen by right-wingers on this site in a while. Literally no benefit to it at all. Some people on our side have no ability to think strategically. Frustrating. Now, to be clear, I'm not showing you tweets from Matt Walsh, Cassandra Fairbanks, and Ben Shapiro to give them credit because I don't think that anyone deserves credit for the bare minimum. You don't deserve credit for simply being against attacks on a disabled teenager who loves his dad. I feel like that's just an expectation for all of us as adults, right? I'm showing you their tweets, however, because it speaks to how monstrous the modern right wing has become and the cruelty people like Matt Walsh and Ben Shapiro are now condemning is the exact kind of cruelty that they've encouraged for years on their programs. So if Matt Walsh feels grossed out by unabashed cruelty on the right, maybe he should be a little bit introspective because I'm assuming a lot of those people who are making fun of Tim Wall's son learned it from him. But to be fair, Republicans don't have a monopoly on cruelty. And I say this because at the uh, Democratic convention, well, there were some delegates that were walking out and they were greeted by Palestinian protesters who were naming victims of Gaza and just take a look at their response. Say it again. Say it again. <laughs> Mock them again. Mock the children again. Do it again. Do it again. 18 years old. 18 years old. Use a pastor. 18 years old. What the fuck was that? Furthermore, how many of those people covering their ears or making fun of dead Palestinians would denounce Republicans who are making fun of Tim Walls' son? Look, I'm not sharing that video to do both sidesism because both sides are not the same. Both parties are not equal. Republicans are ontologically evil, in my opinion, and they pose an existential threat to humanity. But the reason why I'm sharing that is to challenge all of us at the individual level to just do better. I'm challenging us to try to recognize the humanity in each other. We're all not perfect and sometimes I fail myself, but when we reach a point where we're mocking a 17 year old or we're plugging our ears and saying la 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 in response to Palestinian victims who have been murdered because our tax dollars are funding the bombs that are being dropped on their heads, maybe it's time for all of us to just step back and be a little introspective. Maybe it's time for us to recalibrate and remember why we care about politics so much in the first place. Fundamentally, it is to help people. That's why we care about politics. And sometimes it gets divisive, sometimes it gets ugly and messy, but if we lose our empathy and our humanity in the process, our end goal then becomes unachievable. So in conclusion, do better, Americans.